My name is Natasha. I'm 48 years old. I'm from Lawndale, North Carolina. Give me three words that best describe you. Loving, passionate, and emotional. Talk about some hobbies or activities that you enjoy. I love traveling. Um, I enjoy fly fishing um, and laying in the bed watching television. In 2015, I just did a manual breast exam and I found a lump and I was diagnosed with ERPR positive HER2 negative breast cancer. I did treatment, radiation and chemotherapy, um, and I made my five-year mark in February of 2021. In October of 2021, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer to my left hip bone. I experienced a lot of pain in my left leg, um, burning sensations running down my whole leg, went to doctors and they kept saying I had sciatica. At, at one point I was just like, this is not right. I don't feel right, something is going on. And I went to my oncologist and demanded that I have a scan. And my bone, my scan notated a mass on my left hip. And it had the biopsy and it was bone cancer. I knew when I had my initial diagnosis, it was they caught it kind of late. Um, I was stage 3B. So in the back of my mind, I always knew that there was a chance that it could possibly come back. But in the real world, they tell everybody, oh, if you make it to that five-year mark, you're out of the woods. So in February, you know, I'm like, hey, I've got this five years. And then in October, boom, I'm hit with metastatic. And it took me for a loop, but at the same time, I knew in the back of my mind that there was a possibility that it could come back. So I accepted it and, you know, I just got proactive and started looking for what could be done. I'm, I'm dealing with it and I'm, I'm coping with it, but it has definitely taken my life for a turn. And I just, I just question why all of this is happening to me. Um, I'm still young and I have a lot of life left and I want to do different things. I want to give to people. And I just never thought this would be, be my life. My life before cancer, I was very outgoing. I enjoyed spending time with family and friends, just traveling, having family trips being outdoors, doing different things on my own. And since my cancer diagnosis, a lot of things have changed. I'm not able to do a lot of things independently. I was a very independent person, outgoing. And since then, my family, they're like Hover family, and they monitor me all the time. Everyone's scared for me to go out and do things on my own because of the what ifs. Um, I was very active, working, and now that I'm not working anymore, I basically just have my days to myself. After cancer, I began to see life in a whole new way. I live every day like it's my first day. I want to do everything. I know people have a bucket list. I never had a bucket list. And I don't have a bucket list now. I just know if I wake up tomorrow and say, I wanna go to Italy, I'm gonna book a ticket and go to Italy. I'm, I just live my life to the fullest because you never know what tomorrow holds. And I'm no longer working and I always thought, how can you live without working? But now that I'm not working, I have every day, all day every day to do whatever it is I wanna do. Whether it be traveling, just sitting at home with my mom and dad, or hanging with my grandkids, I have, I have that. There are limited resources. Um, I turn to, I'm in a couple of support groups. Um, I've met a lot of ladies along my 
first diagnosis and a lot of them are metastatic breast cancer patients. So I was able to reach out to them, you know, and ask questions and try to get directive, you know, someone just to help me navigate things and they, they have been a godsend. I don't normally get online for resources um, unless they're recommended because I just don't want to pop up on that wrong on-site resource and hear horror stories um, because I feel like my mindset is one of the main things with my diagnosis. I've got to stay positive um, and keep thriving. And when you go on the internet, a lot of times you hear bad things. And I know there there's the bad and the good. And so I just reach out to individuals that I, I feel are trustworthy and will give me the upside and the downside at the same time. And I come from a very rural town. Um, there are many women who have breast cancer, but you never, you never hear of anyone with metastatic breast cancer. And if they do have it, they don't speak about it. It's just like something that's just not heard of. You don't discuss it. Nobody wants to talk. And for a new person being diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, if you don't have somebody to talk to, you're lost. Um, so it's just been, it's just been really hard. If you are a metastatic breast cancer patient um, and you're struggling, speak to someone. Talking about it releases. Holding it in suppresses and that only makes things worse. Stress is a driving force for cancer. You need to get things off your chest. If you can't talk to friends and family, go speak to someone that doesn't even know you. You tell your story, they listen, they help you find ways to help cope with different things. And there's, there's no stigma attached to it. I know everybody thinks if you go and speak to someone, you're crazy, you're depressed. Well, we have metastatic breast cancer. You have that right. You can be depressed, you can be crazy. I mean, it's enough to drive you there, but handling your own self and going to speak with someone only helps you. I wish people knew that metastatic breast cancer changes people's lives in the worst way. Um, and also, that metastatic breast cancer needs more research, more support, and more awareness. I don't feel like the word metastatic breast cancer is heard enough. The only reason I knew of it is because of the groups that I was, that I'm a part of, um, and there are metastatic breast cancer patients there. And when you say metastatic breast cancer, I don't think people understand that it attacks different parts. It's just not all about the breast. It's different organs in the body. And that's very detrimental to our health. With the diagnosis, your mental, your mental health is one main thing. Um, I know you do treatments for the cancer, but at the same time, it's so emotional and you're on a, you're on a roller coaster and there needs to be that mental health aspect to help navigate through the, through the diagnosis. I can't imagine anyone else in my family going through this. My family tells me how strong I am. Yes, I consider myself to be strong, and I feel like I have to be strong for them. I, I can handle this, but my biggest thing is I don't think my family can handle it. My hope for the future is that research comes up with a cure for metastatic breast cancer because we need it. Um, I want to be cured because I have a lot of life left. My goals are to travel. My goals are to see my grandchildren grow up, graduate high school, go to college, and become parents. I wanna be a grandma to my great-grands. My biggest fear is that I won't be here, and my parents will have to bury their child. Parents aren't supposed to bury their children, and I know that would probably be one of the hardest things for my parents.